Hello, and let's uh, go ahead and implement iteration number four. In this iteration, we would like the user to be able to select a cell and navigate to another screen where they can see the details of the contact that they selected. So to start, let's build the view. So we need to bring in um, a table view controller. As mentioned in the overview, we can use a view controller and add labels to it as we did before but I want to since we're trying to emphasize the table view controller I will use the table view controller so we bring in a table view controller to the screen notice that Xcode brings a table view controller with a dynamic prototype cell similar to what we did with the add new contact we will need to uh, make this a static uh, cell because we will just need to display the information so it's gonna look very similar to the new contact except uh, we will use labels to display the information and instead of text field um, uh, that receive information from the user so let's um, so once we add that um, we need a custom controller and we need to connect to the navigation so let's add the custom controller first, then we'll do the navigation, then customize the table view controller. So with the, we can add a file. And in the iOS source file template, we'll choose Cocoa Touch class and click next. Uh, it's already remembering your last selection. So this will be the contact details table view controller. And then click next choose where you want to save it and create so that creates the contact details table view controller and it comes with a lot of code as we did uh, we showed in the previous one uh, a lot of the table view data source code is connected to the table view being a dynamic prototype cell uh, as we did with the add new contact in iteration 3 when the table view is a static uh, cells we do not need any of that code so we will come back and remove it after we when we are setting things up so what as we added since we added a custom controller uh, let's connect to the custom controller with our screen so in the storyboard select the table view and go to the identity inspector in the utility area under custom class select the contact details table view controller as the class controller as the custom class controller for this screen so now that they are connected the next thing is to connect the address book con uh, screen to the contact details screen so since the user will be selecting the cell in the table view controller we are able to uh, capture the selection event when the user select a cell that's an actual event that the user uh, makes so we can respond and uh, to that particular event so select the cell so this could be tricky because as I uh, showed before there are multiple layers in the table view this table view table view cell content view and then the actual content so make sure that the what is showing up in the uh, top bar here is called contact cell which is the actual cell not the content to view and not the labels um, and while selecting the cell press control and drag better off open the document outliner and make sure you're selecting the contact cell or the, the cell here and then drag from the cell to the contact details stable view controller then release upon release notice there are two actions here since this cell we have an accessory the accessory is a button so we can connect either on the selection or on the accessory or both so I'm gonna select here based on the selection one thing to keep in mind <clears throat> if you choose to do accessory um, the you're not gonna be selecting a cell so the the accessory does not necessarily select a cell so you will have to figure out a way to know what is the row or what is the cell that's being selected so better for our particular case you have to do the selection segue so that the user actually selects a cell and we can respond to that event 
So when we add the selection segue and uh, based on the selection and add a push segue, because this is just a, a, a show detail type of event, uh, as we mentioned earlier, every time you add a segue, give it a name. So we selected the segue. You see here it's highlighting the selection. And then go to the attribute in inspector and there is an identifier. So provide an identifier to this segue. So we're going to call it contact details. This identifier is really important because we are going to use the prepare for segue event to pass the contact that's being selected to the contact detail screen. So we will be using or responding to this particular segue. The identifying the segue is particularly important in this situation because as you can see, there are two segues coming out of this um, uh, controller, which means when, the, when a segue launches, there is a prepare for segue function. The prepare for segue function will be called for any of the segues, but we don't want to pass a, a contact except in the case of the contact detail segue. So we have the add new, con the add contact, and then the contact details, and hit tab so it is saved. So that's our contact detail segue. Uh, so now we set up the navigation. And the, uh, the show segue will add the, the back button, so that will work uh, just fine. So let's go ahead and uh, manage the view for the contact details. So when you select the contact details table, there is the table view. And as we mentioned, the most important part in the table view is to select the content. In this case, we want a static cells. And there's one section. And uh, you can choose the style, I'll choose grouped, uh, which give you a header and a footer, separator, uh, I'll use a single line, and I will color this line uh, blue. And uh, that's all what I need to select in the table view. So I'll open the section. In the section, you can specify how many rows. So because I have first name, last name, email, I'll use three. You can specify header. And uh, in the header, I'll say uh, details, and in the footer, uh, press back to return, or something like that. Anything uh, you want. You can send different types of messages if you would like. Then in the section, we go to the cell, and for every cell, uh, there is a content to view. In the cell, if you're using dynamic prototype, you have to choose an identifier. If you are not, then uh, you don't have to give it a name. Uh, there are different styles, so we'll use the basic style, which adds a label, uh, or you can add your own label. So we go to each one of the cells, and uh, it adds a label here, so we'll choose the basic. And uh, for the cell, add uh, a label. You can select this label and change if you don't want to the title is not going to show because i'm going to replace that in the view did load but if you want to change the color of the text for instance to uh, something different and make each one of them a little bit different you can do that you can change the font size and the font uh, uh, type if you would like And so that's all for setting up the uh, table view. We're going to need to change the data on each one of those uh, labels so we can connect them as outlets and set the data uh, for each one of them. So we bring in the assistant editor and uh, I'll make some room by hiding the project explorer and the utility area. Um, and I need to select the label. So uh, because of the layering, the document outliner is better. So select the label and uh, create an outlet for this label. So I'm going to call it label first name. And for the other label, uh, I'm going to call this last name, label last name. And then the last one, 
will be label email. So that's for what they want. If you have other details that you defined in your own contact, then you can add more uh, components here as well. So that's all we need to do with the view. So back from the uh, assistant editor and we'll switch to the contact details. So I don't need any of the code that specifies the dynamic table. So in the view did load, I don't need any of that commented code and I don't need any of the table view data source code. So I'll take all of that out. And I'm not doing any navigation from the contact details to any other screen. So I'm going to take out the navigation as well. Make sure you don't take out the closing uh, place here, curly place here, because that's the one that closes. If you double click, that's the one that closes the class. And we need that. So what do we want to do when this uh, view loads? We need to receive a contact from the main address book and assign the uh, label, the text property in each one of those labels to the values coming from that contact. So let's define a property here for the contact. So I'll say var contact and then I'm going to give it the type contact and I will not initialize this one. You can initialize like we did with the add new contact. I just want to show you different options here. We know that this contact detail screen will never be accessed except through a selection. And once there is a selection, there is a contact. So that guarantees that the contact will always be initialized before coming to this table view controller. So when the view did load, we just need to update the label so I'll say label first name dot text equal and then retrieve from the contact the first name property then label last name dot text and retrieve from the contact the last name as the same for the email address from contact and email address so that's all what we need to do in the contact details table view controller. Connect the labels as outlets, initiate a property called contact so we can initialize it before coming to the contact details and then the view did load. So now we switch back to the address book, the main uh, controller and in the uh, navigation, the prepare for segue function, we want to use that function and uh, we'll use that function to initialize the uh, controller. But we don't want to do anything unless it is the contact detail segue. So before anything, we want to verify which segue is this. So we'll say if segue dot identifier equal and then use the contact details segue that's the name I give it if you forgot which which name you gave it go back to the storyboard select the segue bring the utility area I called it contact details actually I want to call it contact details segue so contact details segue maybe even copy that and return to the ad the, the address book and paste it here in that string so whatever you identify the contact detail segue with has to be what you use here to compare with. Then the block for the if statement, which will mean this code will be executed only if the identifier is, uh, is true, if this comparison is true. So what I need to do first is to get the selected contact. So I need to ask the table view which row is being selected. So this is my table view and uh, I need to say the selected, selected row at index uh, path. No, this is select. Uh, index for index for selected row. So the index path for selected row returns to us the path for the row that is being selected, but the path it includes the section number and the row number. I only need the row because we are in one section only and the row give you 
an integer. So I will call this selected index. So, the, so I take the row that is being selected and assign this to a local uh, variable here. Uh, back to project 3, this is very similar to what we did there when we uh, access the selected uh, item in, in the picker view. So we got the selected index. I need to get the actually the selected contact. So selected contact. Where do I get the contact from? From the data source. And the data source has a function called contact at index. And this is one that we created. So I provide an integer represented the presenting the index and that will give me back the selected contact so now that I have the selected contact I think I need to add this here nope so let's see why do I have an issue uh, integer on lab did you, you mean to use so I need to provide that here okay so fix it so now that I got the selected contact, I need to retrieve the uh, destination from the segue. So I'll say let destination equal segue uh, dot destination view controller and cast the type to the actual type that I have, which is the contact details table view controller. So now that I have the destination, I can assign the contact in the destination the contact property in the destination that we just created to the selected contact. So that will assign our selected contact to the contact property in the destination before the contact details screen being launched. So let's see this in, at work. So we'll see here the uh, view controller and if you select an address book it launches the contact details and see here the first name, last name and email are being selected. If you go and add a new contact so may choose any contact here just make an upper name and add an email address for that contact and then click save so now you have a contact if you select that contact you see the details of that contact showing in the contact details so these are represent this is the uh, required part for this project the address book in the uh, next iteration we will learn how we can delete a contact from the list as well as um, reordering contacts if we would like and to save these contacts to a file so even if you shut down your uh, device the file will be saved and you will always have access uh, to them. Thank you.